Konbanwa minasan, it's Gray from Akazashi's Tea House over in Japan. How are you doing tonight? Are you good? Are you Genki? If it's morning where you are, good morning. I've got a new review for you. It's the second issue of Mark Millar's new vampiric series, Nightclub. And it came out today, Wednesday, January 18th, for the incredible price of $1.99. That's right, only $1.99. This um, is written by Mark Millar and it's got art by Juanan Ramirez. Now, he's done some really good art in this. I like the way he does the characters. I like the way he draws some of the, the kind of vampiric power scenes you'll see further on when I do my story summary. But let me just show you one of the pages I'm talking about. Look at this here. Great scene where you've got main character Danny Ramirez kind of forming from vampire smoke to save his friend from being hit by a truck. How cool is that? Whoa, 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 wait a minute, Gray. What are you talking about? Did I just say Danny Ramirez? I'm so sorry. I'm getting jumbled up. It's Danny Garcia and the artist is Juan Ramirez. What can you do? I turned 50 last weekend. That's my only excuse. Okay, back to my review. So I guess what you want to know is, uh, is this second issue any good? Is it worth buying? Well, in my opinion, yeah, it is. Now, I've heard a little bit of, you could call it criticism, that this is kind of a YA series. Is it aimed more at young adult readers? I'll tell you what, I don't care because it's written really well. It's witty, it's funny, it's surprising. It's Mark Millar, so you know, you're gonna have some fun with this. And the basic premise is, if you became a vampire when you were a teenager, you know, what would you do with those powers? Would you try to become a superhero? And that's what he's doing with this issue and this story. And it, it's a great idea. I think it's a great premise. So um, the first issue, if you saw my review, was quite a lot of uh, build-up and set-up because you had to you know, build, bring up the characters, build up the characters, set the story. Now, this one is a lot more action. It's more fun. And it's basically Danny... Um, trying to convince his friends, first of all, it's him. You know, he's he's still alive after that terrible accident last issue, which left him pretty much almost for dead. So, yeah, as I say, a lot of fun, really good fun to read. I enjoyed it. I've read through this twice now, um, picking out some of the art. The panels are good. It's a nice, um, energetic, vibrant style. I think the artist, Ramirez, has had fun showing some of the vampire powers. And yeah, there are some good ideas in here. So that's pretty much it. It's If you're looking for a fun read, never mind the price, you know, the fantastic price. It's a fun read and it's a nice idea on um, vampire stories, a little bit of a different take. So I recommend it. Go out and give it a try, see what you think. Okay, as always, I'll give my short story summary. So please keep watching. Here we go. Danny Garcia's plan to surprise his friends appears to have backfired as he watches them flee down the street. Guys, where are you going? Maybe it was the mask. On the second page, we get this brilliantly realized scene by the artist, Juanan Ramirez. We see Danny seeming to appear out of smoke, grabbing his friend, saving him from being hit by a truck. Then, he smokes his way into a passing cab. Danny tries to explain to Sam like, I'm sorry, I didn't want to freak you out, but Sam still doesn't know who he is. The cab driver is non too plus, as you can see. He pulls out a gun. Sorry, sir. After that, Danny turns back into smoke. It must be a vampiric power, yeah? And then we see him landing in a restaurant, crashing down on a table. Help, please, says Sam. Finally, Danny manages to get him on top of the building and tells him, wait, you know, dude, it's me, it's Danny Garcia. Danny? And then we find out what happened to Amy. Apparently, she's still running 10 blocks away. We get a page of catch up here where Danny's explaining what happened to him. Don't say vampire, it sounds weird. It's great witty dialogue by Millar. We hear that the vampire that turned Danny also hypnotized the hospital staff. So they just thought he got hit with a few cuts and bruises. He just walked out of there? Even went so far as to convince his family too. Then Danny starts to show off his powers. He tells him he's really fast and as strong as an ox. Then proceeds to lift up a huge weight so then Sam asks the important question, why are you telling us? Danny's reply is a single solitary smile, bearing a snaggle tooth. Are you serious? Says Amy. What would you do in their shoes? What would you do at that age? Would you want to share it with your friends? Come on, of course you would. Sam's not having it, but Amy's in. What? She tells him like, what else have I got going on? I'm bored at school, there's no jobs out there. 
Come on, this is your chance to be a superhero! Wait, are you seriously going to bite Amy? Well, that's the way it works, right? Then Amy asks if it's going to hurt. Danny says he doesn't remember. Sam turns away. I can't even look. Then we get this brutal looking page here where you see what exactly happens when a vampire bites a human's neck. They don't hold back on the blood here. Three days later, Amy wakes up in the grotty apartment feeling terrible and with a strange metallic taste in her mouth. She looks over. Wait a minute, is that... Sam. Turns out Sam wanted the powers too. This is so messed up. Next we get this glorious double page spread showing the three teenage vampires with their wrestling masks on. Great angle by Ramirez here, look at it, the way he's drawn them. You've got Danny in the foreground and the two friends in the background. Danny's talking about how amazing it feels to be leaping from roof to roof, just like comic book characters. They don't even need to stop for breath. A bit more exposition here to reveal that they're not only wearing the masks as like costume characters or like superheroes, they're also using them to protect themselves against sunlight. Here Dan is telling Amy to try to transform into bats. All you have to do is picture it, close your eyes. And then we see it, it happens, she transforms into a whole like flock of vampiric bats. Oh my god, did you see what I just did? But then, something strange happens. They're riding atop a car when they seem to hit a wall of glass. Oof! It turns out it's the bridge over the river. Isn't there some kind of rule that vampires can't cross running water? Well, Mark Millar reminds us there is. As the sun goes down and the evening draws in, Sam's talking about getting messages from the bully at school. What do you think they're gonna do? What would you do in his shoes? So, the three friends go to confront the bully and their gang. Okay, this is where I'm going to stop my story summary. There's a few more pages left, but what do you think happens next? Okay, we get this. There's only one variant cover, and it's a gorgeous black and white version of the main cover. What do you think? This is by the artist Juan An Ramirez again. And there's a preview of next issue's cover, so it's issue three over here, which is coming out on, it says, February 15th. Looking good there, we've got a mean looking biker on the cover. Okay, so that's it for my review, um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please consider leaving a like and subscribing if you're not yet subscribed. I also have fantastic Wakizashi Tea House Dojo memberships available now if you're interested in helping out with the channel and supporting a little bit. That'd be so good, it'd be great to have you as part of the team. And I do do exclusive content for members. Okay, so I hope to see you in a future video. Uh, this is Grey from Wakizashi's Tea House, signing off for the night. Matane. Wakizashi's Tea House, please subscribe. <laughs>